He is Lord of all. You yourself know what happened to him out of all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him appear not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word, and the believers from among the others, the circumcised who had come with Peter, were amazed, because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues, and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. This is the word of the Lord. that your church should abide. 
it's time for the children's show. Thank you. 
And it's in Cornelius' house that Peter then continues, and he opens up his mouth and he speaks. And usually when we read in Scripture, when Peter opens up his mouth, we should pay attention. Because either he's going to stick his foot in it, or he is going to say something extremely profound and true. <clears throat> this time, it's the latter. Peter says, truly, I understand that God shows no partiality. That God is no respecter of persons, partial to the Jew just because he's Jew, and unfair to the Gentile because he's a Gentile. In reality, God does exactly the opposite of this. He says, in fact, in every nation, regardless of where they're from, regardless of culture or language or heritage, in every nation, he accepts only those who fear him and work righteousness. Those who fear him. That's the fear that both the Old and the New Testament talk about constantly. It's a characteristic of godly men. It's the fear of reverence, of faith, and of obedience. Thus, it's an attitude of life that's referred to. We even say as much in the explanation of the first commandment, don't we? You shall have no other gods. What does this mean? That we should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. That's the kind of thing that is being spoken of here. This kind of fear that goes along with the faith, the healthy respect, acknowledgement, putting God in the right place as God himself. And in doing so, that also places us in the right position as well. Who are we in relation to God? Who are we in relation to one another? In every nation, he accepts only those who fear him. But also those who work righteousness. And that righteousness comes only out of that faithful heart. It is one who is bent on having this righteousness of Christ received by faith, a quality of soul and of life of which God's verdict approves because it's based on Jesus. Which means that this is far more than doing good things, or being a good person in the eyes of the world. It is a righteousness of faith that comes only through faith in Jesus. That means the sinner does righteousness whenever he repents. And a mark of this condition of righteousness, in fact, is that daily contrition and sorrow and repentance. The contrite sinner does righteousness when he believes in God's forgiveness in Jesus Christ. It's a mark of this condition of righteousness. That faith is daily renewed by the word and the grace of God. And the believer does righteousness when by faith he runs the way of God's commandments. Follows in the footsteps of Jesus, bows to the first table of the law to love the Lord your God with all your heart mind and all your strength, but also to the second, to love your neighbor as yourself. That's what both the epistle and the gospel were all about, this love for others, for God and for others that flows out of faith in Jesus. But doing this kind of righteousness is not the simple thing that some people make it out to. We'd like to pretend that it's easy, but we know that. For example, look at Cornelius again. If his honest, pagan convictions had been sufficient, why did he end up at the synagogue hearing about the God of Israel? And if the synagogue had been enough, then why was Peter now there telling him about Jesus? 
that Jesus is the fulfillment of all of these things. The point is, a few moral rules of life apart from the triune God, apart from Jesus the Redeemer, are a travesty to both Peter's words and the gospel that he brings, and it would bring that same tragedy to his hearers. And so Peter learns a valuable lesson here as well. From the sheep to being let down, do not call what God has made clean common. And what has God made clean? It's more than just foods. What God has made clean is people. Are you clean by the very word of God where God himself declares that sin is now washed away by the very blood of Jesus? And that is regardless of the Jew or the Gentile. And that is Peter's view, being broadening out to a true understanding of the grace of God. But also that understanding of God's gospel, that no man can fear God and work righteousness and be accepted by God without the gospel. And that gospel as the promise of the Messiah in the old and fulfilled by Jesus in the new. So Peter goes on, and he says that this Jesus who washes away sins and makes people clean commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. He appointed Peter, a witness, to announce what he had seen and what he had heard, no less and no more, without any kind of alteration. And the main point that Peter is making is that the Father has made his only begotten Son, who was crucified and risen, to be the judge of the living and the dead. And in his judgment, he is no respecter of persons. But he is a just judge. He judges according to his own standards and not according to ours. Anyone and everyone who believes in Christ receives that forgiveness of sins through Jesus' name, regardless who they are, regardless of how bad their sin might have been, regardless of how unworthy they all are, likewise Jew and Gentile alike, who fail to fear the Lord and do righteousness, reject Him. And when they reject this God, that is a dangerous place to be. So, this is why St. Paul later on says to the Galatians, he says this, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither, neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. And his point is that there is no privilege of birth, position, history, or heritage. Or heritage. And the Jews who heard, the Jews who heard Peter saying the same gospel were dumbfounded. They were amazed at what was happening. Not amazed at what Peter was saying, but amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was being poured out even on these sinful pagan Gentiles. And again, it shows that God and God alone gives his gifts to whoever he pleases because he's no respecter of persons. It reveals how God makes no distinction between us and them. There is no difference, for all have fallen short of the glory of God. And stand condemned before a righteous and holy God because of their sin, but all, all may receive that grace of Jesus, because Jesus came to save all. And while our social Ethnic and language differences are not erased, and we still have differences even in a congregation like this. 
these differences do not separate the unity that we have in Christ. Because in Christ, we have what eternally matters, remaining with he who is the vine, abiding in the very word of Jesus, knowing that there is no forgiveness except in his name and where his name is. There is life and salvation in the forgiveness of sins. And that's why Peter says everyone, anyone who believes in him receives this forgiveness. Born of faith, these Gentiles receive the Holy Spirit by means of the preaching of the gospel, and they desire the promises that God has made. They desire their sins to be forgiven. They desire to be clean. And they desire baptism where those things are given, where they are made children of God and heirs to the promises in Jesus. And so Jesus can now say to those like them, you are my friends. And that's the good news, the peace that we have. The peace that still passes all understanding, the peace that exists between God and men and a peace that ought to exist between each and every one of us here. Peter says that he and the other disciples were witnesses of that peace in the flesh, and how that peace was earned in the crucified and the risen Jesus. And that he is now given as a witness to go out and tell the world about these things, and when he does, when he speaks that gospel, God acts. Maybe one of the most wonderful things of all is it still happens that way today. He still sends out his disciples to bear witness to the truth of the gospel, to those who haven't heard, to those who need to hear, to those who need to be reminded, and it's through that hearing of the word of Christ that the Holy Spirit continues to work. Call, gather, enlighten, and sanctify the whole Christian church on earth. So it's no surprising that Jesus says in the gospel reading, you're my friends, if I do what, you, what I command you, no longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Here's the key. Jesus continues, you do not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask my Father's, he may give it to you. These things I command that you will love one another. Christ has chosen you by the gospel. He has appointed you that you should bear this fruit of faith and love of righteousness and the fear of God, knowing that God is no respecter of persons, but he is a Jesus. And you are in Christ. And because you are in Christ, by virtue of your faith, by virtue of your baptism, you belong and are chosen by him. To abide in his work to remain with him, to be one for whom he always calls you friend, righteous and justified by faith. Because of that, we call each other friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, knowing that no distance, no time, no language, no culture, not even life or death itself will ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus that has worked in and through you. So may that peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.
rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, for he ever stands for us as our own high priest. To you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
given into that forgiveness or anything for the grace of Christ to be shed. body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who will strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
body of Christ.
And we implore you that of your mercy you will express to us in faith towards you and in further love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
we also have prayers from all of the ladies there. Because they all know you, and they all want you to have the very best time over there. And God bless you. Thank you.